Good day, this is Prophetess Wendy. Amen. I love you so much. To my viewers, I just want to thank you so much for being part of this channel. If you're watching me for the first time, you're more than welcome. Amen. I must confess, I'm not an expert, but I speak through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I believe in God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So what do I have to say today? I've been married now for 19 years. Amen. To one man so far. Amen. Because you can say that I've been married for 20 years only to find that five years you were married to John. Six years it was Donald. And then seven years it was Mark. Amen. There's nothing wrong with moving from one marriage to the other. But it's just to be clear and be honest. So I wanted to make that clarity to say that I've been married to, for, 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 for 19 years to one person so far. And that is given my leg. That's Pastor given my leg. Amen. So I'm not an expert, but through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, it's good that we share some of the tips. Amen. For a peaceful uh, marriage. Amen. Some people want peace in their marriage. Amen. I know that we talk about love. Yes, the reason that people came together, it was because of love. I know that cultures differ from one to the other. Some can confess, like my friend, she's, uh, let me not mention, amen, let me not mention, but she says in her culture, it doesn't matter whether you love the person or not, but if they decide that you're going to marry so and so, that's how it should be. Why? Because cultures are not the same. Some of us will marry out of love. Some have to learn to love the next person, but it's much more important is that you are married to that particular person amen if you want peace in your home amen if you want a peaceful marriage what must you do amen because sometimes people say that you know what i know that we say that god is the center and that is true amen you cannot do anything without god god is the one that is guiding us and i must confess to say that marriage is are not the same i can be a mother pastor but you also have your mother pastor her marriage and my marriage is not gonna be the same your marriage as you're watching me is not gonna be the same so when we speak of tips they may work for you and they may work for me and not work for you or they might work for you but not work for me but it's good that we learn from one another amen so what do i have to say to you sometimes you know uh, you could be asking, asking me to say that prophetess, I see these days even pastors are divorcing. There is no hope out there. Amen. Where you are supposed to find peace, you find that in the pastor's home, the pastor is beating up the wife. The wife has got bruises all over the body. There is no peace in that house. Have you ever visited a home? You find that couple are fighting over nothing. Amen. Somebody just said, pass me the remote. Why? Because people are intoxicated. People are full of things that we are not even aware of amen there are things that makes people to lose peace in their own homes amen more especially when certain things are not being done amen when we first got married we don't know who we are we are not coming from the same background my husband is coming from a village i'm coming from a township but my mom was once married in a village but the marriage did not work out so we had to move to a township their lives are not the same amen so what do i have to say you have to know that you are married married god does not give uh, it can happen but most of the time couples are not the same amen you might find that your husband is the one that likes talking to visitors when they visit the house or you find that you are the one that loves talking to visitors when they come to the house your husband just goes into the bedroom amen and you're saying prophet as you're talking too much tell us how to maintain peace in our homes amen Yes, I can start by saying God first. That's important. That's important. God first. But people don't understand. Amen. To say that if God first, how come we don't have peace? How come we are fighting like cats and what? Cat and dog or cat like and mouse? I don't know. But something, something is fighting. So one thing I want to say for sure, ne? when you want to maintain peace in your home this is one of the tips that i'm going to give you because we can spend the whole day we can write a book it's also important to manage each other's weaknesses it's important to manage each other's weaknesses most of the things that makes couples to quarrel is the weaknesses that we are not able to manage in one's life amen for example i'll give you this example you find that my husband is short-tempered amen 
he can get easily irritable. Obviously, yes, there are certain things that drives a man to be like that. But you find that, you know, once we have an argument, if I can respond in this way, you know, he, he obviously a small thing becomes a big thing to him. Amen. Meaning, by now, if you've been staying with that particular person, when I speak of managing each other's weaknesses, you know which button to press. Amen. Even when they come, you know, people fight over nothing. Somebody can say, why are you putting this green flower here? Do you have a problem with this green flower? No, I didn't say I have a problem, but I was just asking. But the way you are asking, amen. So you see now it's starting a fight. There's no longer peace there. People are fighting, arguing over nothing. So managing each other's weaknesses when you know that, you know what, my husband can cook. So therefore, I need to make peace with it. I don't want peace. I need to make peace with it to say that when I come back from work, I will be the one to do the dishes if you don't have a helper in the house, I will be the one to bath the children. Isn't it fun that sometimes you come home late, your husband came home around one, just give an example, you're coming home at seven or eight late at night, but still you find that nothing has been done in the house. That can make you to lose your temper, amen, to ask, but John, what were you doing? Did you help the children with the homework? No. And then you find that he's just busy watching soccer or sometimes he's reading the newspaper, sometimes the phones, the phones that they've given us. Yo, hey, find that he's just busy on his phone, did not do anything. But when I speak of you managing his weaknesses, it's you knowing your partner and his weaknesses and how to deal with it. Amen. Why? Because the plan here is not to divorce. To say I'm divorcing you, John. Can't even pick up shoes from one room to the other. You're always leaving everything lying around, you know. Anyway, these are just small matters, but I just wanted to start from there to say that managing each other's weaknesses it's also also important because once you can be able to deal with such type of things, it removes that toxic spirit. Why? Because right now, if I don't say it, then I'm angry that he didn't clean the house. He didn't do one, two, three. He didn't give me money for the hair. He didn't you know? There are a lot of things that are happening in the house. I remember this couple. Uh, they were talking to me to say that the wife was saying that these days, you know what I do, ne? I don't even pop a lot of petrol in my car. Why? Because they have two cars. They say the husband does not want to buy petrol, petrol for the other car. So what he does when the car has a lot of petrol, he wakes, he wakes up early, takes the one that has got a lot of petrol. Amen. The next day he comes back empty. It's yellow. You know you know that button with empty. He takes the car the following day. The one that has petrol. Now the wife is late. She has to go to the garage. He doesn't even think of the wife. No, 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 no. He's thinking of himself. But they're still together, this couple that I spoke to. Because I spoke to them. And I told her, Could you see what's happening here? The man can't buy petrol. He can't plan. And he's working far. She's working nearby. But he can't plan for his trips. So you need to check some of those things. How do you help him in that situation? You need to talk about this thing. Because they, they were not talking. You know? Now she was acting the woman to, to say if he was waking up at 7, she would wake up at 6 and take her. I'm sorry about that. You know space. You know? But I wanted to say that now she was acting that woman. And when she was acting, she was no longer asking to say that Richard why are you doing this amen but she was just acting in the morning waking up at six now people were no longer talking you know they were no longer communicating why because this thing has built up there was no longer peace you know in the house because they're not talking amen so i know most people speak of communication and like what about communication communication first place in situations such as this where you have to sit down talk to your partner i see john why are you rushing to take the car, my car, early in the morning? Yet we are both going to work. It, it means what? Even financially, they were not talking. John had no money. Amen. He had no money. So he told the wife, you know what? I don't have money. It's not that like I'm just happy to take your car. I just don't have money. I don't have cash. But I know with you, you are careful. You have petrol. So you know what? With your petrol, I'm able to get to work. You know? So what do I have to say? Sometimes it can happen. You're not aware of it doesn't have money. You think when you do your budgeting, he's left with a, an amount. The, or maybe you give each other thousand, thousand. But for him, he does certain things when he gets there. You know, men are men. Sometimes he can just go and buy that radio. That is expensive. 
you know, that is expensive. Buy that expensive radio with that money that you have given him. But with you, you are thinking, I still have next week. I still have that other week. So they were able to find each other. There are certain things that you just have to sit down and talk to your partner about in a respectful way. You remember, Michael? Michael, you know, she spoke to David. She did not respect him as a king. How can you dance like that? You know, she was coming from a royal family, bringing her royal attitude into a new marriage, thinking this is her father's house while this is David's house as the head of that family. Then she told David, David, how can you dance like that? Embarrass yourself like that. David says, I'm doing that for my own God. You know, the way David responded, it was not nice. Sometimes we need to speak out of respect. When you speak of respect, it goes a long way. We can speak for hours and hours. I'm just saying, I spoke of managing each other's weaknesses. I also spoke of um, communication to say that things that are bothering you, it's good that you don't keep them on the inside, but you talk about it and you know, okay, this man has a problem. And the problem of this man is one, two, three. I'm speaking from a woman's angle because I'm a woman, but you, even as a man, you know your woman, she has issues, this one. She has issues, serious issues, you know. Sometimes you find that when you, you, you are sitting with him, you are okay. But once his friends, once he goes to say, I'm going to see my friend, he's going to disappear for the whole day. Sometimes it does not even tell you where he's going. How are you going to build a peaceful home there? You, you, you know, man, sometimes they just leave the house without telling you where they are going. Amen. So if you have got such type of problems, when I speak of managing, it's a, it's a weakness. When we speak of a weakness, it's something that does not go well with you, with your spirit, with the next person, when the other party is doing it. Amen. When they're doing it, there is a habit, you know, <laughs> habit where you say, you know what, I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't sleep before smoking. I, I can't sleep before drinking tea. I will have a headache. I can't do one to do that. There are certain things that can be done. But when I speak of weakness, it's something that you have addressed. So say, you know what, John, when you go out, please tell me where you're going. And he's like, John, but they want me to tell you every move that I take. You know, men, sometimes they can speak anyhow. But nevertheless, it's to manage certain things in your house, like weaknesses. I cannot speak of everything. I'm just saying that there are things that you can make peace yourself to say, you know what? My husband can cook. My husband can clean. My husband can do this. But another requirement, this I must speak about before leaving this uh, YouTube channel. Being faithful to one another is very, very important, you know. Sorry. Sorry about it. When I speak of you being faithful, even in your finances, you know, there are people who like hiding money, even when, 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 when the situation is tough, you know, they can only help the other side of their family. They cannot help the other side of the family, even though they have money, they just can't do it. The money only works for them. It's only for them. But anyway, I wanted to speak about uh, the things that makes people not to have peace in their homes, you know. It's like, you know what, when the man is not faithful, no no matter what you can do, trust is broken there. You know, even though we can try to reconcile and, and, and look at our differences and sit down and say, no, John, I forgive you, Mary, I forgive you. But one thing that I've seen, this does affect one's peace in a marriage. Why? Because now, it, let's, let me give you the next example. Let's say my man cheated when he was away on a business trip. Amen. Next time when he comes to me and say that I'm going to a business trip, I'll be like, why? Because my mind goes back to that incident to say that mm, I found a text saying that when are you coming back again to Dubai? Amen. And I did not forget. Amen. I'm a human being, even though I can forgive, but I don't forget. Such type of things can affect your marriage and your peace. But one thing that I want to say for sure once you have forgiven each other, there must be restoration and it's a process. Amen. I know that now when he says that I'm, before he leaves, the Bible says a man hates a nagging wife. Can I just be honest? You know, they say it's like a pipe that is dripping, like bomb, 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 keeps on irritating you. You have to go and what? I just want to switch this thing off. Why? Because it's making a lot of noise and it's irritating you. So you don't want to be an irritable wife. But when you are irritated, you are most likely to irritate the next person because even yourself, you're not okay. Amen. You must spill the tea to the other person and bend them. Amen. And they jump and then there's, hey, 
there's a lot of things going on so what do i have to say sometimes you need to be humble as a woman when i speak of you being humble is to come down to that level of saying my husband has made a mistake when he's busy packing for his trip or you're busy packing for his trip don't just remind him again <laughs> yo are you going back to that woman again and he's like which woman Men are not like us, you know. <laughs> Men can hurt you now and then five minutes they forget. Sometimes they don't even come back to say, I'm sore. Amen. But you can see through the action, but ah, it looks like this man is sore. Then now you're reminding, I mean, Dora, we, we know you and your tendons. And right now you're not even supposed to be speaking about that. It shows what you are human and there's nothing wrong with that. But when it becomes wrong, it shows that you are not okay. You have not yet forgiven to the fullest. Amen. You still have those thoughts of thinking. What if this man walks out of that door? When we, spoke, when we say that trust has been broken, what if he's going out and he's going back to do the very same thing that he has been doing? Amen. You wait. You let him go there and come back and check his pattern. Is he still continuing doing one and the same thing? Amen. Is he still continuing doing the same thing, the very same thing that we've spoken about to say that this must not be done in order for our marriage to work? Amen. When we say you trust your husband, it's when now, when he goes to a trip, you have got peace in your heart to say that he is just going for a trip. Yes, it has happened, but it was just a mistake. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, it's my opinion. It's not written in the scripture. It's my opinion. <laughs> But uh, coming back, let's just be serious, okay? Just be serious for one minute. So coming back to the topic is to say that you need to trust and love again. You know, when you speak of forgiveness, you don't keep on reminding the person, can, can, can we be good people? If Jesus Christ was to keep on reminding us, I remember that day, that day when I found you with a boy at the corner. Remember that day when you did one, two, three? It wouldn't be a good relationship. You, you forget and then you move on. Amen. You move on. You don't have to be the one to remind them. You remember what you did? You know how we are as well. You remember what you did to me 10 years ago? You found that you were supposed to be happy. Some of the things that are hating you that are stealing your peace is not something that has happened today. You had your firstborn and then something happened when you had the firstborn. Maybe the mother-in-law did not visit the house. You are still angry even today. Amen. To say that you took care of the baby on your own. Nobody from your family came to visit and help me with the baby. You know, those kind of things. And then we're looking at the child. The child has started with grade R now. The child has started uh, high school. But you are still, still stuck in the past. Amen. The past can steal your, your joy. The past can steal your peace in your home. Why? Because the enemy likes using certain things to distract us. The enemy likes using the past to distract us. Where the husband is happy, coming back with a cake, we're supposed to cut the cake and be happy. You're not happy. You're not happy. You're not happy. Why are you not happy, Jacobet? Remember last year, you didn't buy me a cake. And then this year, you bought a cake. When why are you buying this cake the following day? You forgot my birthday, and then now eh, you always forget the most important dates in our lives. You know, the, those type of things are little pieces and pieces that can build up. It might look small, eh? but it can become a mountain which cannot be climbed at the end of the day. So there are certain things that we have to make peace with it. Amen. There are certain things like we're speaking of forgiveness. So it cannot keep on reminding a man to say, "Remember what they did to me." Uh, two, two, 20 years ago, 20 years ago, then hmm, I still have that mark. Hmm, then you remember what you did? And then it's asking, what did I do 20 years ago? Yeah, you, 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 you with your sister, with your sister, you left me. Uh, you, 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 you can't even, even speak proper. Why? Because this thing has been stuck in your mind. Let it go. It might not be what I'm saying, just I'm just trying to give you an example of certain things that steal our peace. Amen. You need to love your husband and know the type of partner that God has given you. Amen. Know the type of partner that God is. I can give you ex a simple example. Né? Um, I love taking pictures. Yo, God told me that I'm going to be fed, you know, I'm going to gain weight. I know that one of the good days I'm going to gain weight. God has already spoken. 
even now if i have not yet gained weight but he has spoken about that to say that one of the good days i'll gain weight but i love taking pictures even if i can go out you know i'll take pictures even if i can just go to a street if my mind tells me take a picture i can take a picture but my husband is not like that amen so i cannot force him oh come 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 amen the moment I force him, he will come and take a picture with an angry face. Next thing, I don't even get to post that picture. Why? Because it's not him. It's not his thing. I need to accept there are certain things that your man cannot do. Amen. But there are certain things that you love that your man, you feel like he must support you and everything. No, there are certain areas where you feel like I just have to let this man do his thing. Amen why because if right now i'm forcing him come take pictures with me you can even take pictures with me then i'm just gonna go take pictures with other people you know how we speak sometimes we can be careless that's why it says this tongue it's the smallest part of the body but hey can destroy and it says the woman has the ability to build their own home or destroy with their own hands so what do i have to say learn to to accept that there are certain things that my man cannot do amen there are certain things that he can do. Amen. He is a human being. He's not an angel. He's, he's a man of God. But behind that man of God, there is a human being. There is a man that needs to be taken care of. I remember there was a certain um, audio that I, I, I used to listen to when I was young. It was T.G. Jakes preaching that in every man there is a kid. And when that kid jumps out, it tends to make a lot of mistakes. So I will say... I won't say exactly how he put it, but I'm quoting from him. It's not coming from me to say that in every man there is a kid. Amen. Even in you, there is a girl. And when that girl pops out, you know, she loves lipstick. She loves a lot of things. I don't know what type of girl you are, but there are certain things that you do that you, when you do it, it's okay because it's you. But it's if it's him, it's not okay. But for certain things, for you to have peace, ne? learn to manage each other's weaknesses learn to communicate more often of things that are not making you happy i know we said first god ne? god first but another thing don't forget to pray for your family don't forget to pray for your partner it's very very important and also pray for the peace that you want to see in your house because the devil is fighting like nobody's business he knows that once there's no peace in the house it likes chaos it's chaotic that man he's chaotic amen he does not think he's deceiving people in living in this fantasy that is not even out there you are in the reality of your own marriage where you are writing your own story where your children must learn from this marriage where people must be inspired by your own marriage you need to live right with god and live right with the man that he has given you or the woman that he has given you it says love your husband no, no it doesn't say love your husband it says submit to your husband but to the husband it says love amen your wife as christ has loved the church amen so what do i have to say once you know who the type of person your husband is or your wife is you're going to respect them amen there are people who just love their own space you find that when they come home they don't talk to anyone they don't greet them boom they go straight to their room amen even when they are visitors they're just like that or the, when they are visitors say hi hi they move to their room they don't talk to anyone by now, it should be known the type of partner that you have. My partner does not like spending time with my friends or whoever that is visiting the house for that particular time. So therefore, you even inform them to say, ah, my partner is forever busy in a nice way that you can put it. You know, because people like talking about other people forgetting their mistakes as well and their problems and their challenges now making your marriage as if it's the one that has got a lot of problems. So what do I have to say? God first, manage your weaknesses, communicate know your partner amen respect your partner respect your partner it's very very important i'm going to talk about respect and teach you what is respect through the guidance of the holy spirit but those are the few things that i could share also when i spoke of my marriage to say that my husband and i are completely two different people two completely different people you know my husband is those people that like studying a lot you know, you know, professor, you professor, you know the type of person that I'm talking about. But with me, I'm a friend of everybody. <laughs> the Bible says, don't beat up drums for yourself. So I'm not going to talk about me and my personality. But I'll say that we are not the same. But yet we love each other. We have a way on finding each other. There are certain things that we share together. We know that we love praying together. We love going out together. We love spending time together. But there are certain things like I was ashamed. Like, doesn't love pictures, my husband. 
uh, he hardly takes when once you see him taking pictures not that he has been forced or he's doing this for the sake of peace in the house amen but he does take pictures with me for the sake of peace hallelujah <laughs> why because he knows that my wife loves pictures sometimes even if, even if i don't want to take a picture will be the one to remind me don't you want to take a picture and i'll be like oh yeah he knows that would make me happy amen and then we'll have a healthy relationship so nevertheless, it was just to remind you of those few things. I did say that I'm not an expert, hallelujah, but I speak through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. It has been 19 years of wonderful years of being with the men that I'm with today, and we are still happy together. We are still living in a peaceful home. Why? Because the Lord is with us. Don't forget to pray for your partner. I love you. Your role, okay, your role as a woman is to submit. Amen. Is to submit, hallelujah. And I did speak of submission in one of the videos. Go check it out. Amen. Just go check it out. Then you'll learn a few things from there. I love you. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. No, marriage is perfect. I must, not, I must not forget. Amen. Don't be deceived by pictures. You see people standing together. Like, oh, wow. I want that marriage from next door. Hey, if walls could talk, we'll know a lot of things that are coming from the neighbor that side. Anyway. Your marriage is good just the way it is. It's not going to be like my marriage. It's not going to be like anybody's marriage. But you have got a good marriage and you can do it together with your partner. You can. God has given you the perfect partner. Together you are one. And God loves this marriage. And I'm still going to continue to pray for this marriage. If you need prayer in your marriage or you've got questions that you would like to ask me, please comment down below. I will really, really appreciate. I will really talk to you and assist you through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I love you. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.